Buffy St. Marie's place in history would be secure if she never wrote another song after this one. He's the one who gives his body as a weapon in a war. Universal Soldier became an anthem for the peace movement of the 60s and combined with the fight for, for Aboriginal rights, got her blacklisted during the Lyndon Johnson Richard Nixon years. I got her shaking in my head. Bowed, but not broken. Buffy, who was born on a Cree reserve in Saskatchewan, re-emerged on Sesame Street. What you doing, Buffy? I'm feeding the baby. See, he's drinking milk from my breast. Her time on Sesame Street was motivated, she says, by a desire to remind people that Aboriginal people exist. After that, she picked up an Oscar for co-writing this. It always gets me. Fun stuff, but Buffy's early years were hard and lonely. Growing up, she says she endured abuse both outside the home and in, and she recalls those tough early days, and her role as a tireless activist for Aboriginal peoples in a new book about a remarkable life. It's called It's My Way. busy person these days, are you not? I am. I'm traveling all over the place. How's that going for you? Good. You know, you've been a part of uh, being a vocal uh, political person for an awful long time. There are those who say that... It hasn't that, been that awful. Well, long enough. <laughs> long enough. It's been wonderful, a wonderful long time, Thank right? Thank you. The... I've heard lots of people say that America's not in a... Like what, what white people in America are experiencing, what people of color have been experiencing in America forever. Exactly. It's not like this is this is a recession only for white people. Right. That this is what it's been like on reserves, and this is what it's been like for African Americans mm -hmm. and Latinos for, mm -hmm. from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And for poor white people. Yeah. Is that is that accurate? Well, the problem isn't racism. The problem is greed. And sometimes it's disguised as racism, but it's not really. Don't go for that. It's not racism. I mean, who hates Indians because we're brown or have feathers or something? Nobody. No, it's about greed. It's about, it used to be about the gold rush. Now it's about uranium and water. It just happened. We see it first. Right. You know, we see, we see uranium um, coming from our lands. We see the uranium waste dumped on our lands. And white people don't see that. But when a white person goes back, you know, he turns on his faucet in the kitchen and, you know, we pretty soon we realize that we all belong to that same river. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in a way, it's a lesson, but <clears throat> it's a tough lesson, yeah. Reading your book, you get a real handle. I mean, you didn't write the book, but it's your life. Yeah. Book, what was it like to share? Because you share a lot of heavy stuff in this book. Yeah, I had a hard time as a kid. Uh, thank God I was an artist, because it really did save me, because there were bullies in the neighborhood and in the house, and there were pedophiles in the neighborhood and in the house. And, uh, you know, where I went was inwardly. I went to art. I went to painting and music and right, making up stories. Pedophiles in the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's not. That's not just like. It's not uncommon. Right, but but it is your reality. It's how do, reality. How I mean, it's, it, you can't just retreat to art to get away from that to survive that, can you? Well, that's where I went instead of going out and playing with the other kids. I was, you know, that kind of bullying. I mean, pedophilia is one thing, but it's basically bullying, you know, um, that kind of bullying that we, thank God we're hearing about it now so that we can address it and maybe make things better for kids. We're often hearing about it after the fact, though, which is a problem. Well, yeah, because that's the only time you find out. And, you know, as a little child doesn't know how to talk about that. I mean, I didn't know what to tell my mother. And she used to say, well, was he picking on you again? And I'd say, yeah. And, and she'd say, well, don't pick on her, right? Pick, I didn't know what to call it. There wasn't a name for it. And in those days, too, my parents, it wouldn't occur to them because nobody ever talked about child abuse in those days. They just didn't. So it was, uh, it was just a quiet little sorrow for me, and I made the, me the best of it mm -hmm. by coloring and making music and having my own kind of fun, playing with animals. But I wasn't very good at social things with kids. When did you become the person that became a, a spokesperson? A, a political, social justice spokesperson. When did that jump happen? It wasn't really a jump. You know, I'd, I had written Universal Soldier, and I was writing Now the Buffalo's Gone when I was just a, a young college graduate in Greenwich Village. So Universal Soldier was just an artist speaking the obvious, what was obvious to me. It's obvious that we are responsible for the world that we live in, in a nice way. So how can you give that to people in a way that will motivate them instead of turn them off? Let me play this clip here from the Virginians. 
I'd like to introduce you to a friend. This is Jody Ashton, Mr. Clay Granger. How do you do? His niece, Elizabeth. Hello. Jody and I met on the train. She's on her way home, too, San Francisco. Well, I'm glad you had company. Oh, it was just fascinating. I've never talked to an Indian before. I mean, she doesn't even seem like... Oh, dear, I'm saying it all wrong. Virginia, right? That's, um, what she said, I hadn't talked to an Indian before, mm -hmm. but at that time, were you seeing real Aboriginal people cast in roles? Were you Never. dealing? Never, except for Jay Silverheels, who's from, to. yeah, who's from Six Nations. Um, uh, except for Jay, there, I didn't know of any other Native people in show business, and they asked me to do the show, and I said, well, um, if I'm going to be a part of it, I'd like all the Indian parts to be played by Native American people. And they said, oh, no, that's impossible. We can't do that. And I said, yes, you can, and I'm not going to do it. No, you know, no Indians, no Buffy. Yeah. So I got together with Jay Silverheels, and he had an Indian actor's workshop in L.A. And sure enough, we helped them to pull it off, and they were very glad. But that was the first time ever that a movie was made uh, with Native American people playing all the Native American parts. Okay, anthropology time. Are you ready for this one? Okay. Any puppets offended when you breastfed on Sesame Street? Any <laughs> Did any puppet just go like this? <laughs> no. I'll leave you with that one. That's too good. <laughs> Did you ever end a concert with Richard Gere carrying you off during, during Up Where We Belong? <laughs> no. Never? No. Would you have liked that? But he used to come over the house. He did? Yeah, he was wonderful. He was wonderful. He was just lovely. Um, pretty. Mm. <laughs> so great to see you. Thank you very much, Thank Buffy. you. You take good care. Buffy's in there, everybody. The book is called This My Way. Yeah, guys.